Good morning, church family. You're awake now. My name is Michael Oliver. I am the Devarty Chaplain and lead pastor of Chapel Next, and it is great to see all of you here this morning. Uh, this morning, we're going to continue our sermon series on the Sermon on the Mount, and this takes place in Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 through 18. Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 through 18 are the specific verses we're going to be looking at this morning. And the Sermon on the Mount was a time where our Lord Jesus gathered his disciples and gathered some other people and just had a topical sermon on, over a lot of different things. And today where this text is really relevant to us is it looks at the spiritual discipline, and I would argue one that we don't pay much attention to in today's modern church, the spiritual discipline of fasting. So read along with me, Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 through 18. But when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disguise their faces, that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Let's pray. Father, as we continue to worship, I pray that, that the Holy Spirit would empower me to boldly preach your truth. Father, I pray every soul in this room would leave here a little further changed and a little bit more like Jesus himself, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And then we see Christ's righteousness. How are we made holy? It's through Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 20. And then Jesus switches topics, and he goes through what Christians do. And he looks at public applications. And the first is Christians are to be slow to anger. We see this in Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 through 26. And then we see Christians are to avoid lust, and we're to avoid divorce. And we see this in Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 through 32. And then we see Christians are to have honesty of speech. We're to mean what we say and say what we mean. We see this in Matthew chapter 5, verses 33 through 37. And then finally, we see that we are to be Christ-like as believers in Jesus and love other people. We see this in Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 through 48. And then Jesus transitions into his sermon. And what he does is he now covers spiritual disciplines. Now, spiritual disciplines are something that believers do that basically nurture our relationship with the Lord. And that Jesus talks about three things. He talks about giving in Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. And then last week we saw one of the things we're also supposed to do, the spiritual discipline, is prayer. And we saw this in Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 15. And today... We're going to look at the topic, the spiritual discipline of fasting, which is found in the verses we just read, Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 through 18, which leads me to the main point of this sermon. Christians should know the definition, the purpose, and the warnings of fasting. We are to know the definition, the purpose, and the warnings of fasting. And so those three areas are the areas we're going to look at. So the first definition, we got to look at the first area. What is the definition of fasting? Well, green suitors in this room, probably about every six months when height and weight com comes, we unintentionally or intentionally fast to try to make sure we make weight and don't have to get taped. But that's not what Jesus is talking about. What Jesus is talking about is the spiritual discipline of fasting where you withhold from either food or liquid or both for a period of time. And this has been a spiritual discipline that has taken place since Old Testament times. We see this in Matthew chapter 16, or in Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 and 17. What does Jesus, Jesus say? He says this in 16, and when you fast, so he's assuming everyone he's talking to, you do fast. You engage in the spiritual discipline of fasting. 
And then in verse 17, but when you fast. So Jesus is assuming to the people he's talking to in the Sermon on the Mount that they do fast. And we're going to see that you and I today can also engage this spiritual discipline. Anybody know what happened this past Wednesday? You contemporary folk, which I'm one of them. Okay, one, what was it? Ash Wednesday, all right? Ash Wednesday is the beginning of the Lent season, the time between, 40 days between, before Easter. It's basically a period of time to prepare for Easter. What are you supposedly supposed to do during Lent, especially on Ash Wednesday? What? No meat, well, you're, you fast. On Ash Wednesday, on that specific Wednesday, you're supposed to fast. We contemporary folks really don't do that, but you're supposed to fast. And then for a period of time throughout until Easter, you, you fast. Well, then the question is, well, well, why do you do that? Well, by doing that, it, it prepares you, it, it keeps you in, in your mind check with what's going on as far as what Jesus did for us for Easter. Now, a lot of people these days, you know, their version of fasting is I'm going to give up something. You know, I'm going to give up chocolate during Lent or social media during Lent. And those are fine. But the true purpose of fasting is our next point, and that is found in verse 18. So read along with me. That your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. When we engage the spiritual discipline of fasting, the goal of that spiritual discipline is to commune with God. It's just that simple. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights after he was baptized. And you'll remember toward the end there what happened. Satan came and tempted him. But Jesus fasted. So the challenge for you and for me is if Jesus himself engaged in the spiritual discipline of fasting, Maybe this is something we should consider doing as well. So let's look at the warnings of fasting. And, and Jesus here gives us two warnings. The first is a positive warning. Look at verse 17. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face. Why does Jesus tell us to do that? He tells us to do that so that you look normal. No one can tell you're fasting. And by no one can telling that you're fasting, you're actually, it's an exercise you're doing and you're just communicating with God himself. So his goal is for you to have the spiritual discipline of fasting, to incorporate it, but to have it for you and for God. And he gives the negative warning we find in verse 16. It says this, And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces and their fasting so that their fasting may be seen by others. You see what Jesus is saying not to do? He's saying don't make a big deal out of it publicly. It's supposed to be between you and me. And don't be like the hypocrites, the people who are being self-righteous, who are trying to promote themselves with the spiritual disciplines to include fasting. You know those type of people? The people who, oh, they have it on their face. They just look discouraged and disheartened. And what, what's down? Oh, I'm, 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 I'm fasting right now. I'm suffering for the Lord. And you're just like, oh, okay. They're doing it for attention. And Jesus is saying, don't, don't be one of those people. Um, if you've been a Christian at all for a period of time, you've probably been all over the place as far as your spiritual life. Somewhere along the way in my high school years, I, I became a Pharisee, meaning that I was very legalistic. Um, I saw things black and white. And if you didn't subscribe to the things I thought were theologically important, you were wrong. I was an annoying Pharisee, and what Jesus is saying is, don't be like those annoying Pharisees. Don't be like the hypocrites. Don't promote self. Don't be self-righteous. 
bottom line takeaway is don't be one of those annoying legalistic Christians. So what have we seen? We've seen that we've got to know the definition of fasting. We've got to know the purpose of fasting. And we've got to see the warnings of fasting. What is the definition of fasting? The definition of fasting is withholding from either food or drink for a period of time that you determine. Now, sometimes when I've preached about fasting, people are like, well, isn't that unhealthy? Well, consult your doctor but, and see what you can do. But most, for most people, it's amazing. You can go a long time without food. You can't go a long time without water, but you can go a long time without food. Now, this North American thinks if I just skip lunch, that's fasting. No, that's not fasting, all right? Uh, fasting is for a period of time that you determine. But what is, what's the ultimate purpose of fasting? The ultimate purpose of fasting is to be, for it to be done in secret. And when you have those hunger pains throughout the day or whatever period of time you determine, those hunger pains remind you about God. I am bad about hearing a great sermon and then going, that was awesome and I'm going to apply that and the minute I get out the door, it's out of sight, out of mind. Or in the morning when you have your time with God and you read some scripture and you see something that I need to apply this to my life now and then within 30 minutes in life's busyness, you forget to do it, right? Right? The whole point of fasting is to have a tangible spiritual exercise that incorporates physicality so that throughout the day, you, when you have those hunger pains, you're reminded of God. And then you can train yourself to remind of whatever. During the Easter season, when you fast, what you do is when you, you have those hunger pains, it reminds you of how Christ suffered for you. He was broken for you. And he died for you so that you can have life. And then we've seen the warnings. The warnings is, hey, when you're fasting, just do it, as the Nike ad says. Don't broadcast it. Don't Facebook, ooh, I'm fasting this week. Pray for me, my friends. You know, don't do that. Keep it in secret between you and the Lord. Just as Jesus had said, and when you pray, to keep that between you and the Lord. And also when he talked about Earlier, when you give, give in secret for you and the Lord. Why does Jesus tell us to do those things? Because it strengthens our relationship with him. So here's the challenge. Two weeks ago when I preached on giving, I challenged you to that week to give to either an individual or a ministry that you knew what was in need and to do it in secret where only you knew you were doing it. And I hope you did it. And if you didn't do it, that's fine. You got another week. Do that this week. But this week, what I encourage you to do, especially during this time of Lent, is to pick a season of time to try the spiritual discipline of fancy. And I'll encourage you to start small. Let's do baby steps. Pick a day where you skip breakfast and you skip lunch, and then with joy you eat dinner. And see how it goes. Um, Again, for us North Americans, and you're looking at a guy who loves Taco Bell, you know, I'm I'm not great at fasting, but I have found that the time that I took it seriously and did it, it really did edify me and really did draw me close to the Lord. So that's your challenge this week. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the saints in this room. I thank you that you... Give us things that are tangible, spiritual disciplines that are tangible, like giving and like fasting. And Father, I pray now for this time we approach of the Lord's Supper, I pray that you would bless this time, that we would truly commune with Jesus and be mindful of how his body and his blood were shed for us. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.